Ever since the success of the Dark Souls formula, developers have clamored onto the scene trying to strike lightning with their own take on the Souls-like games. Developing studio Spider's new game Steel Rising is just that, a dreary dystopian Souls steampunk retelling of the French Revolution. The French Revolution has gone differently, however, as this time French royalty and the bourgeoisie have control of mysterious weaponized automatons that have eviscerated the French military and French populace. The king has no need of men when he has control over metal robots designed to kill. It's an intriguing setup, and the continued energy and setting of the game is fascinating and unique. It's not the most beautiful or awe-inspiring world, but it is undeniably compelling. Combat is difficult, and the standard Souls formula is hard at work, with oil acting as a healing mechanic, checkpoints named Vestals meet you every few sections, currency required to level you up, with your stats and weapons, stamina is used on attacks and dodges, and special abilities. Honestly, I'm not a great Souls player myself, and I definitely didn't die in this game as often as other Souls-like, so I do think it's actually a bit on the easier side in terms of the genre, but it's definitely not an easy game. The game's inspiration from Bloodborne specifically is pretty on the nose, but the game still feels distinguished and unique enough to keep a player hooked. Players start out as Aegis, the Queen's designated bodyguard, who is far away from the dangers and chaos of Paris. The beginning period is probably one of the weakest sections in my opinion, as the game's combat feels somewhat awkward and clunky, but as the player begins to find their rhythm, it becomes a lot smoother. However, since the player is just learning the game in the beginning, it's slow, annoying, and tedious. The setting isn't a burning Paris, but grass and gardens, as Aegis sets out to actually reach Paris herself. Furthermore, some segments like the game's first named enemy or boss fight has a random smaller enemy that can spawn if you walk enough close to it. I don't know why, and frankly it's stupid, if I'm learning how to fight the first boss, why are you going to throw other mobs at me at the same time? However, once getting past the first sequence, the game starts to really hit its stride. You start to find your build, combat becomes more of a rhythm, enemies become more interesting, and your surroundings shift to steampunk revolutionary Paris. The difference in settings, however, is pretty great, as the player can witness the wealth and opulence of Paris elite, other times the desperation and destruction of commoners' homes, and sometimes a more rural aesthetic of Paris. Character design is another big pro of the game. Spiders made sure to use full advantage of its steampunk aesthetic when both its protagonist and enemies are in the game, ranging from humanoid-looking robots, giant bullish bots, snake automatons that breathe fire, robodogs, and more. Aegis, especially with gear that the player acquires, can look really intriguing as you become this robo maid of drip. Aegis moves fast, but very specific and mechanical. At first it looks pretty weird, but as I noticed more animations playing the game, I really started to appreciate and dig it, as it fully added to the steampunk vibe. Furthermore, Souls games infamously have to choreograph their attacks, so that players can learn strategies and react accordingly. The robot enemies work perfectly for this, as they mechanically swing, bite, roll, kick, and more. Different enemies and Aegis are able to utilize alchemies, such as electricity, fire, and ice, that enact status effects on the victims if a certain level is actually reached. Aegis can use numerous different weapons, ranging from quick or light attacks, such as claws that focus on parrying, balanced weapons focusing things like shielding, ranged items utilizing alchemy, and heavy weapons that swing slow but hit hard. Aegis can also use mods to give herself unique bonuses that can be upgraded over time so that players can fine-tune their builds as they learn what works best for them, and where their weaknesses are. Map design didn't impress me but it was fairly smooth overall, and the inclusion of jumping and mantling actually surprisingly made some really cool finds. Rather than hunting for ladders, I looked for balconies to jump onto. Jumping wasn't perfect, however, as sometimes it just ends up feeling pretty clunky and janky. Areas overlap, and players constantly find new ways to return through areas as common in the Souls-like genre. I did have a lot of fun playing the game and had an overall good experience, but unfortunately the game is definitely more of a middle budget experience. The game is janky as fuck. Performance on PC is a mess. I have a powerful PC that can run all kinds of games with good graphics and frame rate. But while I was able to maintain a steady frame rate, 
the game just randomly looked like shit, and a bit too often, but personally I was able to ignore it. Hitboxes can be a bit weird sometimes as well, some areas could certainly use a bit of polishing, and bosses could certainly be better as well, as they don't really feel super difficult, unique, or intense. Often I would just end up saving and holding on to my alchemy items, and then freezing them, lighting them on fire, electrifying, petrifying, until they're dead. Voice acting was really weird as it felt like they couldn't choose an accent to keep with, especially as characters would say French words with a French pronunciation and then switch back to an odd accent to speak in English. To me, it would have just been better if it was all just in French and subtitled in my opinion. Another weird component is the game's cutscenes. Most cutscenes that feature Aegis or other present day characters look bad while the flashbacks with dark shadowy backgrounds that highlighted the subjected characters looked really cool and intriguing. Something unique about the game was that I actually liked the overall general area and combat sequences of the game more than the bosses themselves, which is the first time I've ever felt like that with any Souls-like game, yet I still really ended up enjoying Steel Rising. Steel Rising's story was one of the least impressive components. Without spoiling the story, it was disappointing to see Spider's take on such a significant story such as the French Revolution, which deals heavily on the still very relevant topic of the difference in gap between the elite of society and the average citizen. Yet the game doesn't do much to really touch on this topic. In fact, most if not all of the characters that Aegis comes face to face with are previous members of the elite, with citizens being locked behind doors and fairly rare to meet yourself. It would have been interesting to see more desperation from the French elite that are also under danger from the French King Tyrant's robot military, or also more meaningful interactions with the general French populace. Overall, Steel Rising is a fascinating, fun, but nonetheless janky and imperfect Souls-like. It successfully captures its own feel and take on the formula, but the experience is hindered by performance issues and clunky controls. Despite the issues, I recommend the game for any Souls-like fans, and even for people looking to enter the genre, as the game isn't too difficult, and actually has an assist mode where players can specify things like damage reduction so that the game is a more fine-tuned and enjoyable experience for them personally. However, given that the game does have a fair amount of issues as of now, I think the game is best purchased on sale. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, give it a like and subscribe for more of my content. It really helps me know what kind of videos and content you're interested in, so also make sure to leave a comment below if you have a specific game or topic you'd like me to cover next. Catch you next time, thanks.